Hello, and welcome to my advanced hacking guide for Cyberpunk 2077. This guide will present the BOSS method for systematically finding the best solutions to a hack. This guide assumes that you already understand hacking's basic mechanics, so if you need a refresher, go watch my introduction to hacking video and then come back. All right, that's enough monologuing. Let's do this. So the BOSS method is a four-step strategy that will guide you towards finding the optimal path through hack. BOSS stands for basic access, overlap, starting codes, and sequencing. But before you jump into the systematic step-by-step -step process, you will want to do a rapid assessment of the first three steps to focus your search effort. This will save you a lot of time. Firstly, memorize the basic access as you must complete it to pass a hack and identify the locations where it can be completed. In this case, basic access can only be completed by getting to the 9A in the bottom left and then going up to one of the TZs. Now, this means we will have to get to 9A from the bottom row, as if we get to it from the first column, for example, uh, like this, then uh, we won't be able to go back up to the TZ to complete basic access. So identifying where the basic access code can be completed will decrease your search area, which will decrease the time it takes you to complete a hack. Next, identify the most overlap between the objectives, starting with the longest side objectives. In this hack, can you spot the most overlap? It's an overlap of two and occurs between the start of install keylogger and the end of retrieve files with their BB42 codes. As you can see, this BB42, if you were to do this, that would lead into the install keylogger side objective. And lastly, identify your starting options. In this hack, we can eliminate disable turrets as a starting objective as there's no TZ in the starting row. Okay, now for the systematic boss process. The first challenge you really have to overcome is efficiently integrating the basic access objective into a densely packed string of codes that contains the best or most side objectives. So at the start of your hack, you should identify the basic access strings overlap with the objectives and then create routes that we will check later by combining basic access with the overlapping objectives you've identified. In this case, the basic access code is 9ATZ, and its 9A code overlaps with the end of camera leg and install keylogger, while its TZ code overlaps with disabled turrets. This process gives you three routes which you can use to build strings that will A, pass the hack, and B, have at least one overlap. Now, if you don't want to write these routes down during your playthroughs, you will have to remember which routes you've attempted in a hack. I recommend starting by checking the routes that can be combined with other side objectives to create a string that contains the most overlap or best objectives, and then check the less optimal strings if the optimal ones are impossible. Next comes the challenge of identifying optimal code combinations by overlapping objectives to create a six length string. You add unused side objective code strings to the start and end of each of your routes, if they fit, until you reach a six length string. Your primary goal here should be to find strings with the most overlap. By quickly scanning the objectives earlier, you would have already identified that the largest overlap occurs between install keylogger and retrieve files. Consequently, you should prioritize trying to overlap start and sequence a string containing basic access, install keylogger, and retrieve files, because you know it will be efficient. Going through the routes, you should skip the first and second routes for now, as they don't contain either of your priority side objectives. However, the third route, BB429ATZ, does have install keylogger, which is one of your priority side objectives. Looking at this route, you could add TZ to the start to complete camera leg, but you want to try your priority objectives first. So instead, you should try adding 42 to the start of the string to integrate the retrieve file side objectives into it. Since the string is only five codes long, we could also look to add another code to start or end to complete another side objective. In this case, no other objectives end with 42, so we only have to look to add a two length objective at the end that starts with TZ. This leaves us with the single possibility of adding BB to the end of the string to integrate disabled turrets. This final string contains two three-length side objectives, one two-length side objective, and the basic access, which is quite impressive considering the fact that it only takes six inputs. All right, you now confront the primary challenge of the game, starting and sequencing your code strings. By creating string roots at the start, you 
Give yourself a structure from which you can systematically approach the hack, checking each one until you find a solution. This will help you avoid losing yourself in the codes and all the possibilities, especially if you're doing these hacks without a pen and paper. Looking at our string, we can start it by selecting the 42 in the fourth column and follow it up with BB in the fourth row and then this 42 in the third column. However, there's no 9A code in this column for you to continue the string, which means the string is impossible to complete. Now, we could eliminate this root altogether as there are no more densely packed strings possible with our initial root. But before we do that, we should also consider the possibility of a dead code at the start of the hack, instead of trying to fit disabled turrets at the end. Now, what is a dead code? A dead code, as I've decided to call them, is when you put in a code that doesn't contribute to getting an objective directly, but you do it so that you can get to another objective code that lets you complete a specific set of objectives. Now, in general, dead codes are a bad idea as they cost an input and are time consuming to consider, as you have to check a lot of possibilities, but they can be used if you really want to complete specific side objectives, which could be the case depending on your playstyle. The reason why I mentioned this is because I specifically designed this puzzle to illustrate how the optimal hack path may not be the best path depending on your playstyle and desired outcome. Looking at these side objectives, it is clear that the camera lag and dis uh, disabled turret side objectives will provide stealth and combat advantages. However, the install keylogger and retrieve files side objectives may provide valuable information that will enable your V to navigate a quest with additional leverage such that you unlock additional dialogue options later on that lead to new quests or relationship outcome possibilities. So in this case, if you are prioritizing completing these longer objectives, you could try starting this hack with the dead code. Let's go through that process of finding a hack uh, path together that starts with the dead code before we go back to our other routes to find the technically optimal hack. So if you were to start your search here in the second column, you would be able to choose any of these 42s below. However, you wouldn't be able to progress past the BB codes in the last column. So like, as you can see here, this 42 only leads to this BB. This same with this one and this one. So let's just say we pick this one and then pick this BB. There's no other 42 here in this last column for us to continue this hack. This means you can eliminate checking the second, third, and fifth rows in all future columns. Now, when you check the third column, you'd be able to progress further by selecting the 42 in the third uh, row. Now, when choosing between the BB codes here, you can eliminate checking this first column one because you already know you have to get to the 9A code from the bottom row in order to be able to complete the basic access. So therefore, you would choose the BB in the fourth column and then choose the 42 in the bottom row instead of the top row for the same reason. After selecting the 9A in the bottom row, you can then go up to either the TZs in the first column to complete this hack. Now, this is pretty good. You've done two, three length side objectives and the basic access. So, you know, it's not super efficient, but if you really wanted these side objectives, great job and really good job to find this. That dead code trick is something you really wanna keep in mind as you're progressing through these hacks. Now, if you wanted to check for a more efficient hack, you could go back to routes one and two to see if they combine with other objectives to create a more densely packed string of objectives. All right, so I'm just gonna refresh this. The first route contains camera lake and basic access. And at either end of this route, you could add disabled turrets. However, we can eliminate putting disabled turrets at the start as there's no TZ code for us to start with. Additionally, we can eliminate trying to put any codes at the end of the string as getting to the 9A in the bottom left in two inputs is impossible. So we can move on to the second route. We can put install keylogger into the start of the route as getting to the 9A in three inputs is possible and then potentially end the string with a, uh, 9A to complete camera leg. We can start the string by selecting the BB in the third column and then following it up with the 42 in the bottom row, as we know we have to go to this 9A in the bottom left. 
Then we have to choose between uh, these two TZs. And in this case, both these TZs lead to BBs in the last column. So we can choose either of them and then finish up with uh, either of these 9As. This hack path is quite uh, objective dense as we complete one three length side objective, two two length side objectives, and the basic axis. However, as I mentioned earlier, it may be more preferable for you to be less efficient so you complete the specific side objectives depending on your end goals in Night City. Anyways, I hope this guide will provide you with a useful strategy that will aid you in completing the best possible side objectives during your hacks in Cyberpunk 2077. As you may have noticed, I've actually recreated the hacking minigame for my videos, and I will be trying to publish a working version of this practice game uh, before the game's release sometime early next week. My next video will dive a little deeper into sequencing a string using the overlap kind of principle uh, using the following puzzle next week. Feel free to take a screenshot of this puzzle and post your pass in the comment section below, along with the time it took you to find your path. Also, if you would like to make your own puzzles for others to attempt, you can submit them along with your Twitter handle or other social media for self-promotion uh, via my email below. Anyways, if you found this video difficult to follow, I recommend checking out my previous video here that covers the basics of hacking in Starfunk, or you can just tell me that my video was shit and roast me in the comment section down below. In either case, thanks for watching, have a good one.